Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode of Software Architecture in Go, we're going to be discussing a design pattern called Circuit Breaker. So what is Circuit Breaker? Circuit Breaker is a design pattern, specifically a cloud design pattern, meant to improve reliability. And if you haven't seen uh, my previous video about functional requirements, I highly or rather non-functional requirements or architecture characteristics, I highly encourage you to see that video first. It will give you an idea of why we're covering this specific illities in particular. So what does it do? Well, it prevents to execute an operation likely to fail. It keeps track of the failures to avoid wasting resources. This is important to keep in mind because when we're talking about a circuit breaker, we're not referring to internal resources, but rather things that we communicate with, maybe a different microservice, maybe a service we don't maintain. And again, just to rephrase it in a different way, I don't mean to talk about something that it may belong to the same team. Maybe the same team is in charge of maintaining this microservice or resource that we're talking to, but rather a thing that is outside of the count the, of the bounded context of the service that is interacting with. Okay, so why is it needed? Just consider this use case. There is a service A that depends on service one and service two, and they communicate to maybe augment the data that we need to return back to the client. But what happens if, for whatever reason, service one fails? Well, should we fail? in the context of service A. I mean, probably, I mean, it depends on the business logic. I don't know what business logic we're trying to implement. Maybe in the context of service A, if any of these services fail, then we should fail. But what happens in the case of, uh, well, like I said, it's only augmenting, augmenting data or adding new attributes or new fields to the data that we currently have on the service A side. Well, perhaps we shouldn't be failing. and. And again, that's okay, but how can we determine when to continue communicating with that service number one? Well, this is when the circuit breaker design pattern comes into place. The way it works is that it's going to be defining a few different attributes internally to keep track of the failures and the successes. Successes, <laughs> you say that correctly, whatever, successes that happen and, and in, in a way it will be depending on the configuration that we're using, it will determine, hey, maybe this is failing, maybe it's timing out, maybe it's working, maybe it's not working, maybe it's failing again, hey, it's back again, so we can use it one more time. But how does it work? Behind the scenes, the way usually, I think all of the circuit breaker packages that currently either are in Go or in a different programming language is that there is this concept of three different states which indicate a closed state, an open state, and a half open state. The idea of using a circuit breaker is similar to what we will be using in real life where you have a fuse and if it breaks then the, it doesn't affect the whole the whole elect, electri, electric circuits that uh, we have in our house, for example. It doesn't burn down our house, to, to say it in a different way. However, when we're build, building distributed systems, the important bit to think about this is that we need to retry it and make our system reliable. So this is the key point of, of the circuit breaker. It's going to be determining when something is failing when trying to communicate to a different service. However, it's going to be, be tracking what failed, when it failed, and maybe there is a way to retry it and try it again and, and maybe close the circuit, so to, in a, to say it in a different way. Now, this is how it works, and it may seem complicated, but I want to show you the code that implements this, that implements this thing so we can see how this works in real life using a specific and concrete package for Go. So let's jump into the code and let's see how this works. As usual, the code for this example will be linked in the description. There is a repository that you can clone and play with it. And the changes I made this time is that if we go back to the repository or rather, well, say in a different way, there is a repository that using, using the repository pattern that is, and we're using for our to-do microservice, I went ahead and modified the way it's implemented so we can wrap all the calls that happen to be using Elasticsearch. Again, this is not the best example, but I want to give you an idea how this works. When we are talking about internal resources, we shouldn't be using the circuit breaker. We should be considering in cases where we are connecting to services that we don't maintain or we can control of. Okay, 
So this is just an example. I just want to make that clear. The way I made this change is that there is a new uh, variable called CV, called Circuit Breaker, Circuit Breaker, that happens to be implementing or using this package from Mercari called Go Circuit Breaker. And what this package is doing is that it's implementing the circuit break. Well, rather, what this type is doing is implementing the circuit breaker pattern. And the way I'm uh, the way I'm instantiating is I'm defining a few options just for demonstration purposes. But again, please refer to the, com the to the documentation because there are a few nice exam there are a few nice options that you can use for either perhaps defining a few ways to uh, trip the wire of the circuit breaker. Maybe you're going to be defining consecutive failures, maybe timeouts, or maybe a different way that you can do it manually. It depends on your use case. But the way I define it for now is that I'm going to be tripping the wire or breaking the wire or opening the wire after three consecutive failures. And the way it's going to be open is going to be up to two minutes. If it if it, we try it uh, and the request succeeds after two minutes, we will close the circuit breaker and everything will be uh, closed again and therefore we will be still connecting to the to the service that we're trying to connect to all right so let's if we jump to the implementation of buy which basically is doing a search operation is uh, if you notice there is a <coughs> referring to the ready command or <laughs> the ready command the re ready method that indicates hey is the circuit breaker ready in the context is it closed or is it open? If it's not open, it means that it's closed. Therefore, you can still continue and do the subsequent request that we have here. If for whatever reason this request fails, then it's going to be triggering a failure that indicates and increases the configuration that we have right here that we defined initially in the uh, initializer that we have all the way right here. So I have my server running and if I go and and try to execute it, everything is fine, right? Because I have my Docker containers running locally. Everything seems to be working. And if you see, it just, you know, returning the same data all the time. But if I go ahead and and say, you know what? Let me stop the Docker container that is in charge of doing the Elasticsearch uh, service. It's in charge of handling Elasticsearch. If I fail, or rather, if I request again, it will fail. And it will fail again, it will fail again, it will fail again. And I want you to pay attention to what happened just now. What is happening right now is that because it triggered three requests according to the configuration that I have here that says, hey, I want to trip the, the, the wire or open the connection of the circuit breaker after three consecutive failures, you shouldn't be requesting to the Elasticsearch uh, service anymore. And I want you to call, uh, pay attention to this. So I'm, I'm failing. I mean, that's expected, but I'm not calling elastic search like the actual service anymore and this is the whole point of circuit of the circuit breaker uh, pattern is that when something fails you can determine hey i'm failing right now what should i be doing about this so like you know define um like a delay and then continue after a while or perhaps i shouldn't be doing anything and just fail immediately so this is what happens in the context of the circuit breaker so what is going to happen is uh, after two minutes when this com when this completes because i was using this configuration that i have right here if i try again it will try to close the circuit breaker again if the request succeeds and if it does it will try to continue the request as usual so if i start the servers right now if i do um is starting so it seems to be running if i try again it will still fail and that's fine but it will continue trying to request after a while and this takes a while depending on the configuration that you have the idea is that hey if i'm if i'm requesting services that i'm not controlling perhaps there is a way or maybe this is a good idea to define a circuit breaker around them that then we can use for preventing things that we can we can uh, avoid like errors that could cascade into different errors now, I want to call out something really interesting about this API, about this specific package, is that there are a bunch of different packages that implement the circuit breaker in Go. Uh, probably, I don't know, tens, ten, ten, I don't know, I think there's a few for Net, and I think there's one that is based on the Netflix implementation, and a few other ones that are kind of old. 
I am mentioning this specifically because I like the way it's implementing um, using the context package, which again, if you haven't seen that, that video, I will be leaving the description as well. So you can feel free to check it out because depending on the configuration that you have in your microservices, if one of them is failing above of the calls that you have, maybe you shouldn't be considering the call that is subsequent after that one, a failure if the context was canceled or if the context had a deadline. So I like to make that differentiation and, and, and I want to call that out because I think it's important to differentiate when you're dealing with context and when you're dealing with secret breaker at the same time. And also this package also has a way to exclude or ignore those, those calls as well, depending on what you're trying to do with the implementation of the secret breaker that you're trying to do. So let's jump into the conclusions and let's see what we have to talk about secret breaker in the end. Circle Breaker is a cloud design pattern to improve the reliability of your service in the context of when you are depending of ser on services that you don't necessarily maintain. So if there is a need to connect to a different service and perhaps uh, that one is failing, maybe you shouldn't be calling it after it fails for a while. So, but at the same time, there is a way to retry that after a while. So you can define, hey, Maybe after five minutes, if everything was fine, after maybe three requests that succeed, maybe it's okay to continue the request. That way you don't waste resources, you don't waste time, and more importantly, you can get uh, return back to the user as soon as possible. And, and again, you don't mess up with your own service itself, okay? So this is the beginning of the different cloud design patterns that I'm going to be covering, considering all the non-functional arguments that we were discussing before in the previous video so thank you for watching and again if you have any questions about specific software design patterns or rather software architecture design patterns using go then just let me know and i will talk to you next time okay see you have a good night or good morning depending on where you are so see you bye bye